Hi there, my name is Ko M. I'm the community editor at Adweek. Welcome to another edition of Adweek Together. Today, we're gonna to talk about the future of entrepreneurship. But before we begin, I want to remind you about signing up for a corporate subscription. You can go to adweek.com slash offer to learn about how to unlock unlimited access to our essential content and resources. It is August 10th and we have Kim Kaup, founder of the Super Fan Company joining us today. Hi, Kim. I'm good. How are you? I know that you started off 2020 um, on a very positive, big note. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw um, as it was happening live. Um, on the tour, which was like the hottest ticket almost, um, you know, and I was like, oh, wow, she's making products um, for the fans, for the fan experience and going to all these cities. And that was right about when the coronavirus concerns started to, to trickle in and then really impact us. Um, what was going on behind the scenes there? And um, thank goodness that it kind of wrapped up in time. I call it the Oprah magic, right? Everyone talks about the Oprah magic, but it really was so prevalent as we narrowly got in the last date. It was a nine city tour. It kicked off in early January in Florida and it ended in Denver, Colorado. And the last date of the tour was March 7th, which, you know, all of New York basically shut down, I think on like March 12th or something like that. So, I mean, narrowly made it by, by the skin of our teeth. It's like the Oprah, Oprah fairy dust magic that we, we made it happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oprah fairy dust magic. I want to make sure because I'm tuning into our LinkedIn audience that we can hear Kim, uh, just giving a note to our live producer. Um, but also, so you wrap up this tour in time and, and then what, right? Um, as an entrepreneur, we're used to, to pivoting and to trying to go with things on the fly. Um, how did you have to immediately adjust um, to things being canceled, um, especially as summer rolled along? I think what was both comforting and scary all at once was it wasn't just me. I think as an entrepreneur, you sometimes think that you're very unique and you're a snowflake and the truth of the matter is you're not. Uh, and the good news is, you know, the entire entertainment industry was pivoting. The entire entertainment industry was figuring out what do we do with these festivals? What do we do with these big concerts? What do we do with Broadway? And you know all of these facets of entertainment that we're trying to figure out what's gonna happen and where are we gonna go? And I think what's really strong that came out of this is that the entertainment industry and you know specifically where I work in music band together and we're saying, how are we gonna solve this? And so what we've done, uh, my team and I, is a lot of pivot towards digital and a lot of pivot towards at home. So how do we relook at the concert experience or the entertainment experience from home? And what does that look like? And how do we feel together while apart? Which sounds so hokey and hallmarky, but is actually true. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we had Steve Aoki on last week and he talked about how he still was able to have fan engagement even though he was doing these virtual sets. So is fan engagement more important than ever? And how do you look at that in the lens of entrepreneurship and with brand partnerships? I think what's really interesting about this is we always knew that fan engagement was tactile. People mm -hmm. love holding things, buying things. You know, this is from my favorite artist representing their favorite artist, whether that's in clothing or their vinyl record collection. And I think what we've seen through COVID-19 is that's true now more than ever. Now more than ever, getting that special delivery at home, that box on your front doorstep, that's like a highlight. I mean, I know I've gotten so many Amazon packages in the last six months, you don't even want to know. But, you know, getting something to your door and saying like, yes, this is here. Great. That is an experience that is only going to continue in entertainment and especially in music. 
Yeah, I definitely cherish going to my mailbox <laughs> every day. Um, it's silent, um, right? It's like contact with the outside yeah. world. You're like, amazing. Yeah, I mean, I still spray the box. Um, <laughs> but that being said, like, what's a delivery? What's a, something that you've gotten that's helped you as you've transitioned into work from home life? I think as we've transitioned from to the work from home lifestyle, what's really helped me personally is feeling connected. So whether that is, you know, cards that I have here that have been sent to me from, you know, friends and family and coworkers that I can keep, you know, just feeling that connection. So you're not feeling like, wow, I'm at home alone and I haven't seen anybody in, you know, five days at this point. And, you know, just how do you, how do you feel that connection, even though you might not be seeing people in person as much as you were a couple months ago? Yeah. And as an entrepreneur, you also have a strong um, personal brand in addition to an entrepreneur LinkedIn course. Um, <laughs> you've been kind of uh, pivoting with your personal brand, too. Um, how important is it for entrepreneurs not only to stay connected, but to, um, you know, hold hold space? Um, and what have you been doing um, to do that and keep yourself out there? I sound like a broken record, but it really is, I think, about community and about coming together. You know, two things that I've been doing lately. One, I created an entire course for free. It's on LinkedIn. It's part of the Microsoft LinkedIn package. Um, I think they released like 100 courses or 1,000 courses, something crazy for free to help people who are struggling to go through COVID-19. It is a course specifically for small business owners and how to navigate this crisis that we find ourselves in. So that was something that was so important because what I realized in a lot of the small groups and founder community that I was a part of, we were all trying to help each other on the phone. And that's great, but that's not scalable. And the people that are connected, it, you're excluding people who maybe aren't in that network or aren't locked into that specific group. So how do you scale that? So that's one way. And the second way I've tried to scale that is bringing my Coffee with Kim talks live. So every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, I go live with a CEO, an investor, an industry exec, and say, let's have a conversation around productivity, career, business. How the heck are we supposed to manage right now? And I think keeping those conversations flowing and live and in person and getting questions back and forth, that is so, so important right now. And so those are two things that I've really just dove headfirst into during this. Yeah, and which is one of the reasons why, you know, we hold Advig together too. So um, we definitely, you know, get to look forward to something every week as creators, but also, you know, get so much back um, from the community, as you're saying. Um, what is your everyday like as an entrepreneur? How has it changed? Um, what's the advice that you give to others, you know, as, as you kind of try to stay connected, but also, you know, look for new ideas and ways to be creative? I think what's really helped me during this time is routine. I'm such a stickler. You know, I'm getting up, I'm moving my body every morning, um, whether that's a walk, whether that's a run, whether that's a workout, you know, just getting in the zone of here we go, we're going to conquer the day. And then I think really for me, when I was, you know, in the pre-COVID times in New York City, you might run into somebody on the street or, you know, all of a sudden run into somebody at a restaurant or go to a meetup or go to a networking event. You had room for these serendipities, these sort of life magic moments that might happen where you connect with someone or meet someone. And what I've found especially true right now at home is that we have to create these moments for ourselves. So it's joining Ad Week together on Mondays. It's joining Coffee with Kim on Wednesdays. It's making that time for an hour long networking session virtually via Zoom. You have to now create time blocks for those moments to occur. Mm -hmm. So before where it was a little more serendipity, you're not getting that because you're obviously at home in the same room all day. So you have to actively work to say, how am I going to create this learning, these serendipities in my schedule? And so that is something that I've really taken time for. And I encourage everyone to take time for because you, if you don't make time for it, it won't happen. So it's, a, it's really something that's 
it's essential right now. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you're an introvert or an extrovert or an ambivert, you know, creating um, that space for connection is super important. And also personally, look out hours for just creativity and free thinking. So I think that's really important too. And having that routine. Um, one thing that you've done or are working through right now is from what you did before with creating packages for live events is now doing them for the virtual events. Um, so what, what are those conversations like that you're having with different brands and, and partners? What we're really looking at is saying, okay, the magic of a live event is you're on site, you're excited. What are things that we're creating that you're going to use at that moment? And so the, the ethos is really the same, you know, it, only now it's transferred to home. So it's okay, great. You know, we know you love this product. We know you love this brand. We know you love this artist. We know you love this festival, whatever it is. How do we then say, how do we create that excitement and do those things from home? You know, how do we create stuff that's useful? How do we create stuff that's going to make you smile? That's going to give you a wink and is going to brighten up your day. And I think something right now that all brands and, you know, talent and people are thinking about is really how do you now more than ever bring that brightness, that smile, that happiness to people's lives? Because I think while we always need entertainment and there's always places to turn, I think right now more than ever, it's about how do we bring that into the home? Because we know that people aren't necessarily leaving the home as much as they used to. So how are we bringing that happiness and packaging it up and bringing it to your doorstep? Yeah. And as you look forward to 2021, um, it, are some events being delayed, uh, postponed? Um, will we see a little bit of that uh, thinking from before come back? Uh, what are your thoughts on, on the future? I think what's exciting about the future is a lot of people that I've talked to in the industry, again, are constantly innovating. So I think what we're going to see moving into 2021 is a mix and a hybrid of things we've never seen before. So I think it might be things that are partially at home, partially live for smaller groups, for smaller venues. I think we're going to see this mix of live stream plus there are people in person. You know, I think we're going to see a hybrid that before there was no need to see because everyone would just go to the show. But now I think it's really forced the industry to say, how do we innovate even further than we had a couple of years ago? Yeah. And on that note, um, you know, what about entrepreneurship? You know, uh, I, I remember reading about, you know, how more women are starting um, businesses. Uh, what, what's, what are you kind of hearing in those communities about um, what it might look like in the future? I personally, I think entrepreneurship is going to explode as we move into 2021. I think what this sort of great pause and this grand awakening of COVID-19 has done for a lot of people is really have them look internally and say, am I happy? Do I like where I live? Do I like what I'm doing? Am I happy doing this all day, every day? Am I happy working alongside these people? And I think there have been a lot of aha moments where people might say, I'm actually not happy. I actually don't want to live here. I actually do want to be closer to my family. And what we're going to see is people going, I always had that one idea, or I always thought I could sell that thing on Etsy, or what about those green market things that I've always been talking about doing, but that I never had time for. There's a lot of people who found themselves a whole lot of time for all the projects that they never had time for before. So I think we're going to see entrepreneurship explode. I have a course on LinkedIn called Entrepreneurship 101, like Entrepreneurship Foundations, and I've seen the viewership spike. It's been crazy because I think people are at least getting curious. They're mm -hmm. going, I was always kind of curious about entrepreneurship and let me just watch this for 45 minutes, give it a little a little dabble. So I think we're going to see a lot of people dabbling in entrepreneurship. Now, maybe that's full-blown businesses, but maybe that's just side hustles. Maybe that that is stores on Etsy or freelancing on Fiverr or Upwork. I, I think entrepreneurship is going to see a huge explosion in the next year. Yeah, definitely. Um, what are you excited for um, next year? I'm excited for so much. I think what I'm most excited about is 
I'm really ready to see a movement and a, a surge of female entrepreneurs and you know entrepreneurs that who were on the cusp. I'm always like, you know, whether it's the devil or the angel up for you to decide, but I'm the one whispering like, try it, do it, you know, <laughs> give it a go. Uh, Cause I do, I think I'm so excited to see people getting into their passions and following their passions and maybe leaving jobs that people think, wow, that makes no sense. They were this high powered exact, but, but you weren't happy. So I'm really excited to see the shifts and the changes that are going to come in the career space in the next year. Yeah, it reminds me, um, you know, a little bit of the recession time when you know a lot of people started interesting businesses and really dove into their passions. And um, you know, if we have the, if we can find the energy and the motivation to do that from within, then I think we will see a lot of interesting new ideas and new types of entrepreneurs come in. Um, Kim Kalp of the Superfan Company, thank you so much for your insights and for spending some time with us this Monday. Thank you for having me. Happy Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure to tune in next week for another edition of Adweek Together. And of course, sign up for a subscription at adweek.com slash offer to unlock essential content and resources. My name is Ko M. Have a great week.